I'm Joe Bob Briggs, and tonight we're going to party like it's 1999. We have Maximum Overdrive, considered by most critics to be the worst Stephen King movie ever made. I don't want to hurt Steve's feelings. I know he tunes in now and then. Steve, if you're watching, I personally think the movie does have its moments. And after that, we'll have what critics think is, well, the worst Mad Max movie. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. So it's worst night on Monster Vision. We're starting off the year right. And, you know, speaking of starting off the year, earlier this week... I was reading my favorite book in the world. I guess you, all, you guys all know what it is, uh, Not Just a Stooge by the late Joe Besser. Uh, you know, I read it for about the 14th time. He was the, he was the curly that everyone's forgotten about because he only did it for one year. And I realized one of the facts of life, it's really a profound insight you get from this book, we can't all grow up to be one of the three stooges. But then I had another thought. Just because the young people of America can't grow up to be one of the Three Stooges anymore, that doesn't mean we can't all be like the Three Stooges. I mean, maybe we can't do everything at once. Maybe we can't snap our fingers on our fists like Mo did. I never could do that. Maybe we can't deliver the roundhouse haymaker sledgehammer fist to the skull on the very first try. Maybe we can't poke our best friend's eyes out with our fingers. But there are some things that we all can do. We can grab our little brother around his neck and grab our little sister around her neck and ram the tops of their skulls together like cymbals in a marching band. Anybody can do that. We can all pour airplane glue on Dad's chair before he sits down at the table and then die laughing when he stands up and rams the back of his chair through his lower back. Yep. We can all pull each other's teeth out for fun. So when you think about all the Three Stooges antics you can do in the privacy of your own home, you have to stop a minute and say, Hey, Mo, try this on for size. Right? Just think what a happy country this would be if people got up every morning and said, how would the Stooges do it if they were alive today? And then every time you saw a fat lady on the street, you'd probably go right up to her, step on the hemline of her dress, unravel it, hose her down, and stick her finger in an electrical socket, right? Look at that hair, just like Larry's. Ha, ha, ha. The other thing you can do is get up in the morning, grab your Bulgarian turban, Put on some Coke bottle glasses that make you blind. Have your best friend frizz out his hair and stand up against the wall and throw some knives at him and scream out, Maha! 40 times before breakfast. People just don't have fun anymore. And speaking of fun, our first movie tonight is Maximum Overdrive, which is about these machines that start taking over the world, like automatic bank machines that use the F word when you try to get your money out. Only the last survivors on Earth end up at Pat Hingle's truck stop watching these 18-wheelers drive around and around all by their lonesome. And we've got some excellent splatter effects in this one, including a little kid on his bike getting Aunt jemima by a steamroller, a leaping electric carving knife, and various forms of deranged lawn care equipment. And I want you to concentrate on this very first scene. What incredibly famous person is seen screaming in the front seat of her car while the car is destroyed by flying watermelons? I kid you not. I'll do the drive-in totals at the next break. We don't have time for them right now, but I'll be here all night, so go. Maximum Overdrive, it gets a bad rap. It's actually one of the, it's one of the finest movies ever filmed in Wilmington, North Carolina. Yeah. And in fact, check this movie for more wacky stooge ideas. You'll live longer, you know? <laughs> oh, wise guy, eh? <laughs> Maha! I don't really do the stooges. I gotta work on that. Joe Bob doesn't get nearly as much hate mail as people think he gets. I know because I'm Rusty, the Monster Vision mail girl, and most of the letters I see are almost positive. I'm not counting the ones from TNT programming executives, because that's really not mail. Those are memos. Anyway, I do see your letters, and I do love every one of them. So come visit us at the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision, or... Contact us the old-fashioned way at 1010 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. You can even email us at monstervision at turner.com. Try to avoid phrases like, lame, no-talent donkeys behind. <laughs> you can't imagine how Joe Bob overreacts to those. See Rusty deliver the Monster Vision fan mail to Joe Bob Briggs every Saturday night on TNT. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Maximum Overdrive on TNT. Did you see her? Marla Maples being bombarded by flying watermelons in her famous role as woman number two in Maximum Overdrive. Remember when she first started dating the Donald? 
you know, and she became Marla, or whatever you call it they were doing. I guess it's not dating if the guy is married to somebody else. But anyway, when they first started rooting around, the newspapers would report on her as a, quote, mysterious actress. Now we have evidence that she had indeed emoted on film, 42nd billing in maximum overdrive, and a dang fine job she did, too. Okay, let's keep on with it. It doesn't start to drag for another couple commercials, so right now it's pretty good. And Oh, and I for, almost forgot, I promised you those drive-in totals. Let's do those now. We have 20 dead bodies, one possible breast, one dead dog, 28 dead motor vehicles, six quarts blood, it's the only movie in the history of the world to have all its music performed by ACDC. How about that? Twelve exploding trucks, one exploding ice cream truck, two motor vehicle chases, wrist carving, random video game electrocutions, little leaguers massacred for no reason, steamrolling of small children, ventilated Pat Hingle, filthy restrooms, gratuitous version of King of the Road, vending foo, Diesel foo, garbage truck foo, bazooka foo, two and a half stars, maximum overdrive. Okay, go. You know where Marla and the Donald met? In church. Isn't that sweet? You know, they sat in adjoining pews in the church there in New York. They, they discovered they had the exact same religious beliefs. He believed in his money and she believed in his money. And uh, how much do you think she got in that divorce? It wasn't that much. It was like in the low eight figures or something like that. Do you know how often people rip off our Monster Vision website? I'm proud of that. They want to share what they find there with the whole world, and that's what the web is all about. Of course, we get the TNT lawyers to hunt them down like dogs, but you don't know what you're missing if you haven't been to the site lately. Not just the weird beard mail, not just the Playmate stuff, not just the transcripts and the downloadable photos. But we're adding new stuff all the time. New stuff to steal so we can sue their butts. Check it out at the tnt.turner.com forward slash monster vision. We don't really sue them. We get a couple of grease monkeys to rough them up a little bit. <laughs> Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash monster vision. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Maximum Overdrive on TNT. Well, we got a whole lot of subplots going on here, don't we? We got the redneck truck stop owner played by Pat Hingle. We got uh, Emilio Estevez wandering around aimlessly. We've got the honeymooning couple careening around the countryside, and that's uh, Yeardley Smith, by the way, as the bride. The one who says, Curtis, are you dead? You know, she's best known today as the voice of Lisa Simpson on The Sim Simpsons. But in 1986, when this movie came out, she just starred on Broadway in The Real Thing, directed by Mike Nichols. And let's see what else we got. We got the uh, waitress who gets cut by the runaway electric carving knife. We've got the Yahoo gas station attendant who gets a face full of gasoline right square in the eyes. We've got the little kid riding around on his bike. And we got a bunch of 18 wheelers that are supposed to be terrifying, but mostly they're just kind of lame trucks driving around and around and around. And uh, what I'm wondering is why Emilio Estevez did this movie. The guy's 23 years old, right? His list of films goes like this. Tex, The Outsiders, the Breakfast Club, St. Elmo's Fire, That Was Then, This Is Now, which was made from his own screenplay, and then Maximum Overdrive. And while he was making Maximum Overdrive, he was already getting ready to write, direct, and star in Wisdom. So we're talking one of the hottest actors in the world at this point, and he's doing dialogue with motor vehicles. <laughs> There's a little bit of a possibility of some actual drama here between Emilio and Laura Harrington, the pretty hitchhiker. Um, Laura was known as, at, she, she worked with Al Pacino on Broadway when he did Richard III, and she starred in a little independent movie called City Girl, but that was about it at the time she made this movie. So let's see how this develops, all right? Roll it. Emilio Estevez, he is the, I, sh I should point this out, he's the nephew of Joe Estevez, the obscure black sheep B-movie Estevez. But we always give Joe credit on this show, but Emilio Estevez's father is Martin Sheen, whose real name is Estevez, but he changed it. And Emilio Estevez's little brother is Charlie Sheen, who took his father's name just to be different from the others and confuse us. I don't know why they monkey around with their names so much. I think it's because the, the Sheens or Estevez's didn't want to be thought of as Spanish actors. 
I think that was the original reason, just like Paul Newman spells his name in a common English way because he doesn't want to be thought of as Jewish. And actors give a whole lot of thought to, to this stuff about their name. And, and I have to admit, I have to admit, I chose the name Joe Bob Briggs for the same reason because I didn't want to be thought of as just another Austrian bodybuilder trying to make it in show business. Two. You know, my philosophy of viewer mail, who needs the heartache? Get rid of it. Unfortunately, TNT insists that you continue to pummel me with your incredibly diverse and somewhat frightening opinions. <laughs> there are two ways to do this. You can write to us at Monster Vision, care of TNT Programming, 1010 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. Or you can use the ways of the truly disturbed. You can email us at monstervision at turner.com. I thank you, Ted Turner thanks you, and Bill Gates thanks you. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Maximum Overdrive on TNT. Oh, honey, you're bleeding like a stuck pig. Only one of the many great lines for Yeardley Smith in this movie. That obnoxious voice she has is very funny. But as the Mack trucks go on the rampage at the Dixie Boy truck stop, wasting everything in sight, this might be a good time to welcome the lovely TNT mail girl, Rusty, who is here once again to help us out with Joe Bob's Advice to the Hopeless, our weekly trip into the demented mind of you, the viewer. How are you, Rusty? I'm fine if you don't start asking me about porno again. What do you mean again? How many times have I asked you about porno? That was, wasn't that a one-time deal? Well, maybe it uh, hasn't been that many. I'm probably adding in all the times you were thinking about it while you were talking to me about something else. What are you saying? You can read my mind? Yeah, pretty much. So what am I thinking right now? Hmm, you're thinking you'd like to see me naked. How'd you know that? <laughs> because you're always thinking you'd like to see me naked. Not always. Hmm. I've got an email from Todd Long at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Howdy, Joe Bob. <laughs> I was taking a second to let you know how much the cartooning freaks here at the University of Tennessee student newspaper, The Daily Beacon, appreciate those Saturday night antics. Well, thanks, Todd. Appreciate you writing in. But alas, a few amongst our ranks here don't quite realize the effects a good beer can have when it comes to making their artsy-fartsy cartoons work. I've tried to convince toon drawers everywhere that nothing beats the six-pack of old mill tall boys, but those suckers don't want to crud up their artistic outlets with some traditional goodness. Moreover, these scum bunnies don't even know who you are, Joe Bob. Thank you, Todd, for that. And I know you can't believe in this sort of modern tragedy in, of all places, a college newspaper, but facts are facts, bub, and there needs to be a way to avoid the loss of such fundamentals of the journalistic impulse, namely the excessive swilling of simple old mill. Now, Todd, I can't say that I agree with you there. Excessive swilling. I mean, I might agree with you, but I can't say I agree with you, all right? I, Joe Bob Briggs, as long as I'm a representative of TNT, do not recommend or instruct you to consume alcoholic beverages. I'll just be over here having another one of these, but I'm not saying what these is, okay? Got that? Because TNT says, don't drink and watch movies. And for God's sake, don't drink and cartoon, right? So, Joe Bob, if you think you got an answer to help me turn these fiends around, then please let me know. Oh yeah, almost forgot to ask, what's the easiest way to make the high sheriffs think you're real busy when it sure isn't the case? Later, Todd Long, editorial cartoonist, Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay, I do know the answer to that one, Todd, but I'll have to share my strategies with you privately after class or else TNT will start paying me even less money than they already do. So, yeah. Rusty, what are you doing after the show? You want to go out for a soda or, uh, you know, a glass of milk maybe? When was the last time you had a glass of milk? This is milk, right here in this can. Since when? Since they hired this new guy in the TNT Standards and Practices Department. Do they actually watch you to see what you put in there? No comment. Uh-huh. Do they watch you pour that beverage or not? They watch. And? There are many ways to pour a beverage, so come out with me tonight and I'll show you. I don't think so. You don't like milk? I've always enjoyed milk. I was breastfed till I was 14. <laughs> it shows. Okay. That's a no, huh? 
Hi, I'm Rusty, the Monster Vision mail girl. It's not an easy job, especially when Joe Bob says something really annoying, and I have to deliver 20 times as many letters from Monster Vision viewers. But don't worry. I work out five times a week to make sure I can handle anything you want to send my way. Come visit me at Monster Vision website, tnt.turner.com, forward slash, Monster Vision, and I'll show you what I mean. See Rusty deliver the Monster Vision fan mail to Joe Bob Briggs every Saturday night on TNT. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Maximum Overdrive on TNT. What's a road twitch? Is that what she said at the end of that last scene? Just a little lesson in manners from the road twitch. I'm sure that's what she said. It might be more of the TNT sensors monkeying around with the dialogue. That's my guess. Because this movie originally got an X rating for excessive gore and for bad language. Stephen King's original idea was to make it raw and vulgar and hard driving, which is why he chose ACDC for the soundtrack. But most of his great splatter effects had to come out. Like, uh, remember the scene at the beginning where the steamroller goes wild on the Little League field? Well, one day they were setting up the shot where the steamroller mows down one of the Little Leaguers, and they had a dummy all set to be flattened. And at the last minute, Steve said to the special effects guy, give me one of those blood bags. And they went over and they put a blood bag on the body, and he was hoping that after the steamroller finished running over the body, there'd be this great dramatic streak of blood on the equipment. But what it did instead is that it made it look like the kid's head exploded. So Steve was happy. He was so thrilled with the footage that he called up his friend George Romero, who directed Night of the Living Dead, and he instantly sent him a video of that footage. And George Romero got sick looking at it. He had to look away from it. So Steve was very proud of himself for doing that. But the MPAA ratings board was not impressed. They told him to take that out, along with a couple other gore effects, and tone the whole thing down, or else he didn't have a chance of getting an R rating. So all the good stuff had to come out. Okay, I'll shut up, because I know you're dying to get back to the story. <laughs> all three of you. Okay, <laughs> roll it. ACDC. Yeah. That's the best thing about this. Official band of the San Diego Padres. <laughs> and Butthead. Or Beavis. Only Beavis wears the ACDC t-shirt, right? Who wears the ACDC t-shirt, Beavis or Butthead? Yeah? That show's only been off the air for about a year. I, I agree with you. I say Beavis. You know, if you were in a bar in Atlantic City and everybody was really, really drunk and you pretended not to know the answer to that question, you could make a big pile of money. You know, there just aren't that many things that are scary anymore, are there? Fortunately, one of them is our Monster Vision website, which is where we put the viewer mail we're too chicken to actually put on TV. Did you people have mothers that write this stuff? Good grief. You can also check out the weekly Playmate, provided your taste in centerfolds runs to scaly mutants and saber-toothed vixens. Just head on over to tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision, and when you get there, do me a favor, okay? Keep it in the ballpark area of borderline psychotic... Don't go into that other zone, all right? We got kids logging on. Some of them are already mutating. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Maximum Overdrive on TNT. Why is Emilio Estevez limping? And what did he just mumble about a broom? He's wasted from pumping too much gas, I don't know, operating too many nozzles. You know, just when you think this unbelievable movie reaches a new level of unbelievability, it tops itself, or bottoms itself. That machine gun turret that holds everyone hostage and talks to the truck stop in Morse code, I would say that's pretty much as far as you can go with this concept, wouldn't you? Fortunately, it's almost over, and what's amazing to me is that Stephen King, he could have chosen any story of all the hundreds he's written to be his first directing effort, and he chooses this weird one that he sold for 250 bucks back in the early 70s. Okay, now for the stunning conclusion to Maximum Overdrive. And, oh, wait, I believe it's time. Yes, it is. It's time for Emilio Estevez to explain the whole plot of the movie in his big speech that begins with the line, imagine you're a race of aliens, right? You don't believe me? 
Watch this speech. You know, a lot of people write me and say, Hey, Joe Bob Briggs, just what is Monster Vision? You don't need no special glasses or an insect's head. Just a healthy love for slime and disrespect for the dead. We'll talk about some movies by the old double wide. And when you get that creepy feeling creeping up inside, well, then you got Monster Vision. It's a heck of a fright. We're tearing the heart out of Saturday night. These Monster Vision movies serve a primitive drive. Cause watching people die can make you feel so alive So throw away your clicker now, the flicks have begun Cause there's nothing you can do while fully dressed It's as fun as watching ENT beneath the bugs after light We're tearing the heart out of Saturday night Tearing the heart out of Saturday night Stay tuned for more Joe Bob Briggs on Joe Bob's Last Call. Coming up next on TNT. And now, Joe Bob's Last Call and Matt Max on Thunderdome on TNT. Let me get this straight. The whole secret of survival was to jump onto a sailboat. And everybody cheers, even though Brad just got flattened like a pancake by a grinning 18-wheeler full of toys. If all they had to do was run into the woods and jump on a boat, why didn't they do it in the first 20 minutes of the movie and save us a whole lot of bad dialogue? Like, you can't do this, we made you. <laughs> Wanda June the waitress in her big emotional scene. Anyway, I'm Joe Bob Briggs, and up next is Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, which most people think is the weakest of the three Mad Max <laughs> movies, but we won't dwell on that. Let me remind you that next week we have Highlander, starring the great Christopher Lambert. Uh, is it Lambert or Lambert? Lambert? And we'll also be showing The Seventh Sign with Demi Moore, or Demi Moore. She hates when people say Demi. It's Demi. Anyhow, it's time... To do this, throw another shrimp on the Barbie, because it's time to watch Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. <laughs> We're reaching tonight. Just in case you didn't see it when we showed it two measly months ago. But anyway, when this flick came out back in 85, I got to admit I wasn't expecting much from it. Because, you know, it's the third one after Mad Max and Road Warrior. And Mel Gibson had been off making love stories and sensitive movies and stuff. This was before the Lethal Weapon flicks. And we just didn't know if he could come back and get low down dirty and start kickboxing with that punk rock mohawk army again. But sometimes people will surprise you. And after just ten minutes of this flick, Mel is already swimming around in pig doo-doo trying to pick a fight with a championship wrestling reject with a midget on his back. So it's pretty good. Let's do the drive-in totals. We have 14 dead bodies, two breasts. As usual, don't think about what you're missing. 45 beasts auditioning for MTV. Two gallons blood, which the TNT We're No Fun department has reduced to about half a cup. Gratuitous malfunctioning chainsaw. Gratuitous game show host. Midget dipping. Pig stampede. Quicksand foo. Three motor vehicle chases. Four stars. Check it out and we'll be right here with you. And this show is dedicated to the one guy who got off work at 1 a.m. last time we showed this movie. And he went, dang, I missed Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. <laughs> this is for you guys. His name is Melvin. He shops at Pottery Barn. <laughs>